Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this wonderful, amazing, beautiful planet of ours. Welcome to another episode of Inspired Living Radio every Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, here on the internet through Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. I am your host today, Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector and Seattle seer, live here in the Pacific Northwest. So it's actually a rainy day today, so a little cloudy. So what better way to uh, sit back, relax, grab a nice cup of tea as we explore through body, mind, and spirit on today's topic of kundalini energy to rebalance the mind and the body. We're going to be talking with our very special guest today, Catherine McCusker, uh, her book, Everyday Kundalini. We're going to get some more insight. I know that I am uh, excited to learn more about this topic. I don't know much about it, so that's what we do here on Inspired Living Radio is we like to uh, educate ourselves, educate our inspired listeners uh, all around the globe, and we just want to thank you for uh, tuning in today. We're here every Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, and just uh, really appreciate you as you follow us uh, the last three seasons. We've been on the air for three seasons now, so it's uh, quite amazing. So I want to get you to just get you some information of what's going on. Catch all the inspired listening community uh, for events. Uh, I'm I'm hosting solo today. My co-host Kim Falcon is currently enjoying her spring break down in the beautiful historical city of Savannah, Georgia. If you've ever been to Savannah, it's a wonderful city, full of history, great restaurants and food. Love the people down in Savannah, and it's got a it's got a very interesting energy with the history that it, it holds. So, uh, Kim, just giving you a big inspired listening shout out. Hope you're having a great time with your family, and we'll see you back here on the air next week. If you want to learn more about the beautiful work that Kim does, I've worked with Kim for years now. Uh, she's a beautiful light worker and does some amazing work. You can visit her uh, on her bicoastal practice. She's both in Encino, California, and Richmond, Virginia. So I know that she has studios in both places. And you can also visit her at lovefirst.info or just do an internet search for Kim Falcon or Kimberly Falcon. So today we're going to be talking about Kundalini energy. And if you want to call in, if you have a question, we're going to be taking calls only uh, on today's topic, which is Kundalini energy. Uh, we'll be opening the phone line shortly, but our call in line here on Ohm Times Radio, the call in line is for uh, the United States only. It's 1 202. 5707057 Now if you're international and you have a question you can always join our closed Facebook page which is Inspired Living Radio just do a search on Facebook the community is closed so you can ask to join and then if you're international you post a question there and we'll try to bring it live to air. Now I'm kind of monitoring everything because I'm running the show uh, solo today. So um, post your question. Let me know if you have a question on Kundalini Energy and I'd be happy to address that and bring it live to air. If you want to catch any of our encore shows, we are streaming through several different channels. Again, three seasons of Inspired Living Radio. You can find us on YouTube, Podbean, SoundCloud, iTunes. I have my favorite episodes at MarkLeanHeart.com. And you can also find other episodes on Kim's favorite at lovefirst.info. If you would like to uh, follow us on social media, like I said, we have our closed Facebook page, Inspired Living Radio. We have about 1,200 inspired listeners all around the world. Global community, global show, 
really appreciate that community. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. It's under the heading Inspired For Us. That's the number four, so Inspired For Us. And we're also uh, on Google Plus Communities page under Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Wanted to let you know our positive affirmation for this month. It's already the month of April, if you can believe it. Every month we try to have a positive affirmation or mantra that's important. And this month we're talking about life is bringing me everything I need and more. Let me say that one more time for you. Life is bringing me everything I need and more. We'll see how the Kundalini energy ties into that mantra. And again, if you want to work with me, you can visit me at marklanehart.com. You can internet search the Intuitive Prospector. I uh, do want to let the listeners know that I have a public demonstration uh, at the end of this month, April 27th, which is a Friday at Inner Alchemy. That's here in West Seattle. Very excited to be working with Inner Alchemy. And I want to give an inspired listener shout out to the owner of A Path to Avalon up in Arlington, Washington, who hosted me last weekend for a public demonstration in mediumship. Uh, Shelly Smith, thank you so much for allowing me to, to travel up to Arlington. My roots, it's the very first place I did public mediumship uh, demonstration when I did that two years ago, uh, March of two of 2016. So just a big shout out to Shelly and her amazing bookstore, metaphysical store, crystal store up north in Arlington, Washington called A Path to Avalon. If you would like to join me every Monday morning, I'm on Facebook Live, Metaphysical Mocha Mondays through the Ohm Times Institute page going into our second season. I go live at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a lot of fun on Meta Metaphysical Mocha Mondays with Mark. 30-minute show, give you some spiritual guidance, some spiritual awesomeness. Um, we just, you know, it, every week is different. So I'm going into my second season, and then I have the Q&A after show right after that over on the Intuitive Prospector page. So if you're looking to get your Mondays going, come join me for a cup of coffee and tea over on uh, the Ohm Times Institute page for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays with Mark. And please follow me on social media. I'm on all the social media accounts, and if you want to follow me on YouTube, I've got about 160 videos now of spiritual fun, spiritual awesomeness. Three seasons of Inspired Living Radio is there. Two seasons of Metaphys Metaphysical Mochas with Mark is there. So uh, check me out on YouTube under Mark Lane Hart. So, okay. So let's get into uh, Kundalini Energy before we go to our first break here. I want to just read a little bit about our special guest. I know that she is on the line, and she is in, I believe, New York City, but um, is uh, originally living in the uh, in London, if I'm uh, if I if I understand that right. Catherine, are you on the line with us? Yes, I am, Mark. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. You definitely definitely know the accent. So definitely from London, UK. Um, and but you're in New York City. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm Australian. I live in London oh, at the moment. I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, I'm here in New York at the moment okay. on holiday with my family. On holiday, beautiful. Okay, um, uh, for some reason I, I was thinking England. So, um, but you're in, you're from Australia and you are in New York having hopefully a, a wonderful time. Is it like your spring break? Exactly. Yes, it's yeah, nice. uh, our spring Easter break, and uh, so we're just here for a few more days and enjoying all that New York has to offer. Fun, fun. So yeah, New York's New York is a very uh, cool town to hang out. A lot going on. So uh, thank you for Absolutely. being right here uh, on Inspired Living Radio. Uh, we like to say that you are the inspired and the inspiration. And when we came across your book, Everyday Kundalini, I thought it would be fun to uh, share with our listening audience. And we have a global audience. Uh, including Australia, including England, uh, that are listening in. But I want to read a little bit about you, your background, and also talk about Kundalini energy, and then we can get into some questions. And we may have a call or two where people may have some questions. So Kundalini energy, it's uh, lying dormant at the base of the spine. Kundalini energy can be awakened through movement, meditation, mantra, and breathing to rebalance the mind and body. It has the power to transform us physically mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, if we learn to harness and control it properly. Far from being the inaccessible mystery that many believe, Kundalini can easily incorporate into anyone's daily routine for a little but long-lasting boost. Stage by stage, this book, Everyday Kundalini, shows you how to make Kundalini a part of even the busiest life. And boy, don't we all need that. We're all so busy. The 12 guided meditations bring together all these techniques to address specific issues in your life, such as creativity, love, anxiety, or fatigue. And they also range the meditations from four to 41 minutes to ensure that anyone can incorporate them easily in 
their day for maximum benefits. Catherine McCusker is a certified teacher with the Kundalini Research Institute, and I'm hoping to learn more about that, Catherine, uh, and has taught at leading yoga studios in studios, including Tri Yoga, as well as creating and running KM Yoga, a successful Kundalini yoga studio in Sydney for three years, so Sydney, Australia. Her private client base includes actors and musicians, and she leads workshops and retreats around the world. She is also a professional opera singer. Catherine McCusker brings her special understanding of the power of sound and breath to her yoga teaching. If you want to learn more, uh, we have her, her, her complete bio on the Inspired Living Radio Facebook page with the, the active link, so you can click right on there. But you can follow her on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Look for KM, that's uh, uh, KM Yoga. And you can also visit her main web website, which is KatherineMcCuskerKundalini.com. So, Catherine, welcome to Inspired Living. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, a lot of tongue twists in there, <laughs> trying to read that. <laughs> you, you, you throw kundalini in there, and uh, uh, everything becomes a tongue twister. So, good thing I, I practiced my tongue twisters this morning. Uh, no, so you pronounced you it very well. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I'm solo today, so it's just going to be uh, you and I uh, having just a fun uh, interview with all of our inspired listeners. My co-host is uh, also on spring break down with her family in Savannah, Georgia. So we'll get to some questions. And like I said, we may have a question um, or two if uh, the open uh, phone lines are open, which they are. Uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit about Kundalini and let's talk about your book. Uh, I, I, was, I did have the option to read through some of the uh, the pages of the book and the meditations really enjoyed that. But let's talk about your journey and uh, just kind of let the inspired listeners know a little bit more about you and how you even got to this point. Yes, okay. So um, Kundalini Yoga really came into my life uh, back in 2000. I was uh, performing a lot around Europe and doing lots of auditions and uh, I was looking for a practice that would uh, keep me more calm, more grounded, balanced, uh, but also a practice that inspired me and uh, empowered me. And uh, I was seeing a, an acupuncturist in London at the time quite regularly and uh, he had told me he was a kundalini yoga teacher and he suggested I experience the practice and it wasn't really till after he kept mentioning it for a year that I did experience it but not in London I went on a trip that he organized to Yucatan Peninsula Mexico and that's where I had my first introduction to kundalini yoga having never experienced it before and I had a very profound uh, connection with that experience and uh, I realized that, you know, I didn't have to keep searching for a practice, that I'd found the practice that I wanted to uh, learn and discover how it worked because uh, of my deep connection to it and, and the transformation that took place within such a short time of experiencing it. Okay, so maybe that's what I was reading about. Uh, so you were were you living in London at one point? Is that why I had London? Yes, I okay. I'm I'm I was living in London for eleven years, okay, and uh, really I was performing a lot there and and traveling and and uh, auditioning, and uh, yeah, it, you know, as we know, living in big cities can be very high pressured, stressful. And uh, especially when you're performing a lot in different uh, different cities and you're going to auditions. And, yeah, I, I didn't have uh, any family. I had friends in London. But, yeah, I suppose I was feeling like I was a little um, stressed out, burnt out from, mm -hmm. from doing lots of regular performing and a little kind of unanchored. And so I was dabbling in lots of other yoga styles like hatha yoga and ashtanga and a little bit of meditation. I, I mean, I was trying them all out. But nothing really gave me that sense of a deeper inner awareness and connection. And it wasn't until I tried kundalini yoga 
uh, in Yucatan, Mexico, that I realized that it was a practice that really resonated strongly with me. Now, you were performing uh, Strictly in Opera, or were you on Broadway? I know I've been to a few Broadway shows. No, I was doing Strictly Opera. I was trained uh, as a professional classical singer in Australia, and uh, I sang at Sydney Opera House for seven years. I I went there after I uh, graduated from uh, university, and uh, I sang there for seven years, and then I went freelance. Uh, moved to London and went freelance and sang in opera houses around Europe. Very cool. What a what a great soul adventure. It's not every day I get to talk with professional opera singers, so that's another reason <laughs> we're doing, uh, doing radio and learning new things and just sharing with our inspired listeners. Uh, like I said, we got a global audience out there, and uh, every, every week is different, and I just appreciate you being here. We're going to be uh, cutting to our first break here in just about a minute, but when we come back from our break, I want to get into Kundalini talking more about the energy. Uh, it, you, you talk about it lying dormant at the base of the spine. So when I read that, that, that tells me that everybody has this ability in, in, to utilize and access their own kundalini energy because it's lying dormant and it's, it's kind of that concept. Once you awaken something or once you're awakened, you don't get to go back to sleep. So uh, we're going to be uh, talking more about that uh, here on Inspired Living Radio when we come back from our first break. And there is the whistling, which is right on cue. So you are listening to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim. You are the inspired and the inspiration. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at embracerefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hey, Inspired listeners, welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim here on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Our very special guest today, Catherine McCusker, calling in from New York, originally from Australia but lived in London, so a world traveler, professional opera singer. We're talking about her book today, Everyday Kundalini and the Energy of Kundalini. So I I think for the Inspired listeners, Catherine, for this interview – 
Uh, how would you define Kundalini itself as far as, I know it's an energy, it's a frequency, it's a vibration, but for somebody that doesn't know much about Kundalini or energy, how would you describe it? I would describe Kundalini as a primal energy uh, that we're all born with, and uh, it is located at the base of the spine, uh, we believe, in Kundalini Yoga. And so we have it since birth, and it's really uh, this primal energy, it's our essence, it's our life force, uh, or we can say prana. So it's an energy that has uh, a lot of potential for transformation and for rejuvenation and for healing, as well as um, increasing your consciousness, your awareness, and your potential to achieve the most in your life. I love that. So achieving the most in your life. And now... You talked about how it lies dormant at the base of the spine. So if something is dormant and you want to wake something up, what's uh, what's some activators? What are some things that you can get it to go, this energy, from moving out of a dormant stage? I think of like a bear in hibernation. How, how do you wake this bear up to, to get it going? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's it's an energy that is there that we can all access uh, if we choose to. Some people never access it. Uh, I've been very fortunate to have an experience of awakening it, and that was through my first experience in uh, being introduced to Kundalini in Yucatan, Mexico. And uh, that set me on the path of practicing Kundalini Yoga, which is a yoga practice that directly channels the Kundalini energy at the base of the spine. And it is through... Uh, movement and uh, asana postures, mantra, sound vibration, powerful breathing techniques, mental focus, mudras, hand positions, and meditations that uh, you can access this energy at the base of the spine and uh, have an experience of it. So I do have a question that's uh, uh, popped up on our Facebook uh, page from one of our inspired listeners, and she is asking: Is Kundalini different from the uh, chakra, chakra? I, you know, I always get told two ways to say it: chakra or chakra system. Is Kundalini a part of that system, or is there a difference between the two? Chakras are definitely uh, a key component uh, when working with Kundalini energy, and. Uh, we work with uh, balancing the energy uh, through all of the seven chakras, uh, the energy centers in the body, and these chakras impact our thoughts, they impact our, our moods and our health. So yes, chakras are integral to the practice of kundalini yoga. Okay, yeah. Uh, great question. Thanks for that question. Like I said, we get questions that pop in depending on who's listening from around the world. So if you have more questions uh, on the topic and subject of kundalini energy, we're talking about yoga, we're talking about meditation, mantras, breathing, all to empower and transform your life through everyday kundalini with our very special guest today, Catherine McCusker, uh, calling in from New York City. So we, again, really appreciate you taking the time during your spring break. Uh, time with your family to to call in and, and do a, a live interview. Uh, so let's talk about as that energy is awakened, uh, is is there a reason why it's at the base of the spine versus not in the brain? Uh, just from a science standpoint, you know, is there a reason that it would just lay at the very bottom of the spine? Uh, is there a reason? <clears throat> well, the base chakra which is uh, the base of the spine is referred to as the base chakra, the root chakra, mm -hmm. is really about um, uh, our childhood. It's about our kind of beginnings in life. And it's, uh, it's where, we, um, uh, where the, the spine starts to grow from originally. So uh, the kundalini is... Uh, located there because it is very much this 
primal uh, energy that uh, is there from the birth. Oh, very fascinating. And see, I know a lot about anatomy and physiology, even with my backgrounds in uh, medicine, but I did not think about it that way as far as the kind of that seed starts there and then grows out from there. And uh, so very interesting. So that makes sense why it would lay dormant and then be awakened at the base of the spine. So very cool. So uh, we have another question, Catherine, because uh, like I said, we get a couple questions that come streaming in. Uh, this is uh, from a first-time listener, actually, so I'm going to give an inspired listening shout-out to uh, Rach Codina, uh, who was wanting to know, uh, she's a local um, person here in West Seattle, so thanks for listening, Rach, Pre uh, appreciate that. She's wanting to know, what is the difference between prana and kundalini energy, and, and, and by definition, what would be prana for our inspired listening community on what prana is, and what is the difference between that and kundalini, kundalini energy? Sure. Prana literally means life force, and prana can be accessed in various ways, through the air we inhale, through the food that we eat, through um, yeah, the quality of our environment, um, and through our breath, so we can uh, channel a deeper source of prana. Kundalini is a, a deeper source of energy, uh, and it's something we're born with so it's um much more of a primal uh life force and through prana uh breathing techniques through the food we eat through the air we breathe they they all contribute to uh, accessing channeling that kundalini energy at the base of the spine mm, very interesting okay well i'm gonna you know uh tie this uh practice into so our like I said, our positive affirmation for this month is life is bringing me everything I need and more. And if we really start to focus on the breath and the prana, we can really start to activate that kundalini, correct? Absolutely. I heard that that was uh, your mantra. And uh, <laughs> that pretty much encapsulates uh, a lot of the practice of kundalini yoga. You know, it gives you a very enthusiastic inspired and positive outlook on life and breath uh, and mantra sound vibration are key components to this practice um, and I would say that they stand out as a compared to other styles of yoga that mantra and breath are really uh, a, a big component of this uh, increase in awareness and to uh, give you more of a positive outlook uh, to cut through negativity and depression and to uh, release anxiety and stress and to give you this inspired, optimistic, enthusiastic uh, attitude towards life. Um, prana is life force, so it's creativity, it's energy, and uh, it can open your mind and uh, inspire you energetically. No, I love that. And I'm just thinking, you know, your health is your wealth, and it all really does start with the breath. I, I think uh, in terms of even when I'm teaching CPR, I'm a certified healthcare provider, and when I teach CPR, the first thing that we look at is the airway and followed by breath. So we can incorporate that into everything that we do, breath, prana, bring in that energy in that you talked about into your system and, uh, you know, uh, awakening an energy that uh, lies dormant. Um, within the spine. So for your book, you started to, obviously you were so inspired that you actually sat down along with your busy schedule of being a professional opera singer and, and travel around that you decided that you wanted to write a book. How long did it uh, take you to write a book and, and what's, the, uh, what's the reasoning behind writing the book? I uh, had always imagined that I would write a book. Uh, I didn't know what okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, I always enjoyed writing as a kid. And so when I went down this path of Kundalini, I found that my creativity uh, levels increased. And I found that I was very inspired uh, with lots of ideas. And uh, I was meditating daily and... Uh, I started to meditate on what a book for me would look like. 
And a lot of my students uh, kept asking me, you know, about books that I would recommend for them to uh, read about Kundalini Yoga, something that would make it more accessible, that would kind of uh, demystify the kind of ancient teachings and, uh, you know, give some more background uh, about the teachings. So I started to plot this book and um, and I meditated on it and I came up with a book proposal. And uh, then actually I had an email from a publisher, from Watkins Publishing, and they said, uh, we've heard you're a Kundalini Yoga teacher and uh, <clears throat> we're interested in uh, commissioning a book about Kundalini. <laughs> And so I said, well, great, because I'm keen, you know, I, I, uh, I'm kind of already there with some ideas. And so that's how it all really came about. Um, my journey, my experience with it, I wanted to share it with others. I wanted to uh, make the teachings more accessible. And so I wrote it really as an introduction to people who um, were curious, but maybe didn't know where to start and uh, so it's uh, it's experiential there are meditations at the back of the book and uh, it also gives some information about the chakras and breath and uh, yeah other other chapters that uh, set out how you would integrate the teachings into your daily life and and uh, how to get started and uh, how that can contribute to your health and your happiness and a and, uh, more balanced, uh, peaceful state of mind. Mm, yeah, very interesting. So very popular topic here on Inspired Living Radio. I already have two more questions that have come in from our inspired listeners. And again, we just appreciate our inspired listening community uh, all around the world tuning in today, talking about everyday kundalini. Tracy is wanting to know, she's saying that there's been talk about sometimes unleashing the kundalini energy and that it can have a negative effect on the mind. Is this a myth or is there some truth to this? And that's Tracy. I think anything that is powerful, uh, you know, can uh, have the potential to uh, perhaps have... uh, a not so good effect if it is uh, yeah not treated with respect. So um, if you are practicing Kundalini Yoga with a teacher and that teacher is certified and uh, knows the teachings well and uh, which are done in a way that you are only given as much Kundalini yoga as you can handle much as much energy as you can handle at the time so if you are perhaps practicing kundalini yoga and uh you had a history of drugs or um some kind of chemical uh abuse or you maybe suffered from depression or you were taking medication then i would advise that you tell your teacher and uh yeah because it is a is a, is a powerful transformative practice and anything that's powerful, as I said, can you know you you have to treat it with respect. So um, people that may have had uh, negative adverse effects from practicing Kundalini Yoga, uh, I would say it would be important to look at kind of their background, their history, their medical history, their um, emotional, mental uh, state of mind when they practiced it. Um, because if you practice it with a teacher in, in a, an environment which you know is safe and secure, then um, you're really only given as much Kundalini energy as you can, as your nervous system can mm-hmm. can handle at the, at a time. So it's not Almost dangerous. Like a, it's a regulator, if you Im- will, kind of regulate. The exactly, energy. exactly, Mark. And and so it, it's empowering. And I think that that's maybe uh, why. These teachings were kept secret in India for so long because uh, yogis and they knew the power of of these teachings, and mm-hmm. 
so they were only passed down from people who, from teachers to students who they thought were kind of worthy of experiencing these powerful techniques. Yeah, almost in a, uh, a protected secret society kind of uh, knowledge that would that would uh, carry on. I, I, I'm just thinking of as as you were talking of. Nikolai Tesla, you know, where he talked about unlocking the secrets of the universe is done through energy, frequency, and vibration. And even in my own journey, I found that metaphysically, spiritually, uh, mediumship, psychic, I find that very true. And that's why I always tell people that they always have these gifts. It's just like you said, lying dormant. And what are you doing to activate that and regulate it? Because at the end of the day, our greatest power that we're given is free will and choice, right? Choice to choose to follow this path and, uh, you know, the uh, responsibility of how much we want to unlock the power of kundalini within each of us. So we have two more questions. We're going to be coming up on our uh, second and last break of the show. But Debbie from Canada is wanting to know, is it usually a long, drawn-out process for the average person to awaken the kundalini energy? Is there a timeline for this? Some people, depending on what's going on in their life, uh, and how receptive they are to the energy and how um, open they are, uh, can have an experience like I did relatively quickly. I just happened to be at the right time, the right space. You know, I was open to it. And, uh, yeah, that life force was unleashed within me. And it was a very peaceful, a very beautiful experience. Um some people, as I said earlier on in this interview, can practice kundalini yoga and may never have an experience that's kind of, you know, transformative and profound and, and uh, you know, quite um, instant. Uh, but with practicing kundalini yoga, yoga regularly, you can definitely create a deeper awareness of your energy a deeper um, sensitivity to that power that we all have within us. Um, so not everyone is uh, able to access that kundalini at the base of the spine, but uh, you can certainly get a sense of what that energy is. And, uh, yeah, some people's uh, experience of awakening the kundalini uh, can be very transformative. They can uh, really make very big shifts in their life quite quickly and uh, yeah, transform uh, their whole being through this uh, kundalini awakening. I love it. So we're going to be heading into our second and final break here of the show. And we'll get back and talk a little bit more about the Institute, uh, that deeper awareness. I'm just thinking of Eckhart Tolle when he talked about the greatest awareness is the greatest agent for change. So uh, stay, stay tuned. We're going to be back here in two minutes with our very special guest today, Catherine McCusker, calling in live from New York City here on Inspired Living Radio. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us? the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, 
radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. America's service members and veterans are strong, forged out of bravery, sacrifice, and duty. Sometimes reaching out for help can be the most challenging and worthwhile mission of all. When you recognize something isn't right, make the call to the Veterans Crisis Line or Military Crisis Line. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio with Mark and Kim. We're in our the last section of the show. We have our very special guest today calling in live from New York City, Catherine McCusker. And we're talking about everyday kundalini. During the break, Catherine, we ended up getting a few more questions. So I'm going to try to get to those questions uh, if I can. But we wanted to get into a deeper awareness of kundalini, uh, talk a little bit about the Institute, how to incorporate, uh, because uh, – I find that it is becoming more popular. Uh, the uh, yogis uh, have let it out, and uh, people are using it and experiencing this and having awakenings. Uh, with everyday kundalini, how can our inspired listeners make kundalini yoga a part of their everyday life? Yes, I think, as you said, more and more people are um, becoming aware of, of kundalini, and a lot of people now are searching for more answers. You know, it's uh, very high pressured uh, world that we uh, live in, especially if we're in big cities. And um, people are looking, I think, for something they can integrate easily into a busy schedule. You know, if they're juggling work and uh, family and, uh, you know, just everyday life. And uh, so Kundalini yoga can easily be integrated, which is why I called it every day. Um, Yogi Bhajan, who brought the teachings to the West in the 60s, uh, he foresaw that we would need this in these accelerated times where you know there's information overload and the stresses, the pressures will be increased, um, which will all have an impact on our nervous system as well as our brain. So uh, these teachings, I think they are becoming increasingly popular now because uh, you can have an experience with Kundalini to shift stress and to clear blocks mentally, emotionally, and physically within a very short period of time. So I would suggest anyone who's keen to start a practice is to find a teacher and then maybe ask the teacher for some exercises that you know are doable um you know say you could set out a program for 20 minutes a day or less if you know that's uh if you're time poor and you can start with simple exercises that uh help to uh balance the energy through the spine we call these spinal flexors there's a very powerful breath technique called breath of fire we use which is quite a dynamic breath I always say that that breath of fire is a great substitute for a coffee in the morning. So if you want to kind of really fuel yourself up with lots of energy and uh, more focus and clarity of mind, breath of fire is a breath we use a lot in Kundalini Yoga and it can shift blocks and increase your awareness 
and give you more focus and clarity. And uh, in my book, I give a series of guided meditations at the end of the book. And these are all for very specific things. And that's the thing with Kundalini Yoga. It's quite prescriptive. So you can find a meditation in the back of my book that works with releasing anxiety, that helps to increase creativity, that gives you more energy, that um, helps to bring more emotional, hormonal balance, um, to open yourself to more, you know, love, to release depression, to fight fatigue, anger, um, to become more empowered, more confident. So, yeah, I would say that uh, for the person who is keen to start practicing, then uh, find a teacher, go to a class, ask them for a, a schedule, a, a practice that they can integrate easily into their lives and just start small, start with something doable and uh, by starting every day with just something, even if it's five minutes, it can have a benefit. Yeah, starting small and growing that, I, I know that worked for me on my meditation practice and I think it's with anything like we, we start small, you know, we start with our training wheels and eventually take our training wheels off and start riding the bike and I think that's... Uh, uh, great information um, for everything that we do in life and, and consistency and discipline and practice, practice, practice is important. And it's it's interesting, uh, Catherine, because everything that you were just saying ties into the two questions that we had. Um, Rach had a follow-up to her first question of why do we use kundalini energy? And I think you just covered that in detail. Uh, and then Trish uh, wanted to know if kundalini energy can make such a transformative change in your life do we, is it due to clearing out uh, energy blockage or something along those lines? And that's what you were just speaking to as well as far as moving energy. And I think of it in terms of like water flow. If the river is flowing, then things are moving. But if the water flow energy, if it stops and it's backed up, then it attracts, you know, uh, you know, smells and bugs. And it, it just it's not as uh, fluid and it's not as healthy. And I think of that in, in terms of energy as well would be the, the same concept, correct? Absolutely. I think your energy can become stagnant. Um, it can become blocked uh, through life experience, through stress, through trauma, uh, and uh, through relationship, through uh, work situation. I mean, there are so many ways that uh, your body and its systems can shut down. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think Kundalini Yoga, if you're open to it and, you know, you're ready to step into it, you can uh, really transform, clear the blocks and transform your energy uh, relatively quickly. And I get so inspired uh, with people that I teach because, I mean, they're of all backgrounds, professions, you know, races, religions. I mean, that's the great thing about Kundalini. It really is inclusive. Um, and... You know, I, I, I've taught musicians, bankers, uh, you know, actors, CEOs. Um, my book's been uh, given to women who are in jail, and uh, I've had some amazing feedback of how these women who felt very disempowered, very disengaged, uh, that this practice really gave them a sense of... Uh, purpose it gave them a sense of inner confidence and inner calm and so i i feel that um these teachings are very for now and uh they're like a toolkit for the modern day life um and i think that because we live in a society now where people want things not today but yesterday mm -hmm. you know we want yeah, we time. want immediate results um kundalini yoga is very efficient in in giving that and uh you can easily integrate it every day even if you have a very busy life uh i think everyone can make five to twenty minutes uh, a day to practice something that um you know is a benefit to them health wise yeah, exactly. And making that time, I'm, I'm just thinking of the, the meditation masters that talk about if you don't have 20 minutes to spare on a meditation, then you should be spending an hour on your meditation yeah. practice. Uh, because we, we are, we're such an on-demand, it seems like we're going faster and faster. And I always have to remind people, even my mantra is, is take the time to disconnect 
so that you can make time to reconnect. And that's reconnecting through yeah. um, your spirituality. That's reconnecting through the power of breath, uh, kundalini, mm. prana, all of it's very, very important. Um, and again, it, it impacts your health and your, your health is your wealth at the end of the day. So let's talk Absolutely. real quick. Uh, about the institute uh, now is that down in Sydney the um, institute that you the Kundalini, the Kundalini Research, Research institute, institute is like the governing body of uh, who becomes teachers within the practice mm, okay. between within the global kind of network of, of Kundalini yoga community I suppose and so they are an institute that was set up by Yogi Bhajan who brought the teachings to the Western 69 and he created this institute um, to uh, really give um, people more information about the thousands and thousands of teachings. I mean, you know, Yogi Bhajan was quite prolific. He wrote many books uh, on health and healing, and he set up like a global company, 3HO. Um, he started a Ayurvedic tea company. Uh, so there are like literally thousands of what we call Kriyas sets and meditations of Kundalini Yoga. And in the Research Institute, you'll find uh, all of that information there. And it's that body that actually certifies you to become a Kundalini Yoga teacher, to teach Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. Oh, I see. And where did you say it's located? Is it, it's not located? It's, it's located in uh, New Mexico. In New Mexico. Okay, just in case. Uh... Yeah. The inspired listeners wanted to learn more. And again, if you want to learn more about Kundalini energy, if you want to learn more about Catherine's background, uh, get her book, Everyday Kundalini, uh, please visit our Facebook page, Inspired Living Radio. We have the entire uh, her bio, um, links to her uh, site at KatherineMcCuskerKundalini.com. You can follow her on social media under KM Yoga. Uh, and again, just get this knowledge, and you know, education leads us to wisdom. Wisdom leads us to knowledge, and knowledge eventually, hopefully, leads us to enlightenment. That's kind of the path. And um, I'm just thinking, uh, we have one other question that has come in real quick here. So let me, just for the sake of time, these, these shows go by so quick, uh, especially when you have a, a fun uh, topic like this to talk about, and you get a lot of questions. Um, one of the yeah, it's vast. Ones, it's a vast topic for sure. Yeah, we could spend a couple hours on this and love to have you uh, come back uh, and do maybe a part two where we can dive in a little bit more uh, to this topic. Uh, one of the listeners was asking, by following the meditations and suggestions in your book, Everyday Kundalini, would the process be safe to follow without a teacher actually assisting you? It's a great question. Yeah, very good question. Uh, I think it's important that you actually go to a class uh, with a Kundalini Yoga teacher first to experience it. Um, but then if you can't get to a class regularly, then the book is a great uh, support, a great guide. And uh, you could uh, clarify any questions that you might have about one of the meditations that I mentioned in the book with a teacher or with myself, they can always write to me. Um, but I think all, it is important that uh, someone who is keen to uh, begin a practice, start with a class, and then the book is a real support for that. And if they are time poor, they can't get to a class, or they're located in a place where there aren't any classes, yes, I would encourage uh, the person to begin a, a regular meditation practice. I think that's great. Yeah, and like uh, you said earlier, it's uh, tools for the uh, the toolbox, or I like to say the spiritual workout room. We've got to get into that spiritual workout room and, and do it every day. And now with the, you know, the power of technology, you can have the digital books. You don't actually have to carry the book around. You can carry it on your smartphone. Uh, now, your main site, Catherine McCusker, Kundalini.com, are you, uh, can your book be also found on the main uh, sites, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all those main sites? And I know Watkins Publishing also, which we love working with Watkins Publishing out of London. They send us uh, some amazing uh, guests for the show uh, if people want to actually get the digital version or the hard copy version. Yes, digital or hard copy, it's all available on Amazon, yeah, and Barnes and & Noble and, you know, big outlets for sure. 
all the all the big out, outlets. But eventually, it'll probably just be Amazon. Amazon's going to run the world when it's all said yeah, and done. Exactly. <laughs> we'll just get everything through, <laughs> through Amazon, right? Um, yeah, but... <laughs> for sure. Yeah, the U.S. release is on the 18th of April. Oh, okay. So uh, just in uh, just a few weeks. So congratulations on that. And I, what I like to do for our guests, just um, just for fun, is what inspires you or who inspires you, Catherine? Who inspires me? Oh, I have so many people that inspire me. Um, well, I think Yogi Bhajan, who brought these teachings to the West, inspired me because I think that he was a visionary and uh, he foresaw that the world would really need something like these teachings to cope with the stresses and strains and, and the accelerated times with information overload and I think he was a maverick uh I like I'm attracted to people who uh break rules <laughs> and who are a little bit maverick <laughs> and uh you know he bought these teachings that were kept secret in India from there to the west in 69 um and he has created a global community I mean Kundalini Yoga is growing exponentially, you know, around the world now. You can literally go to any city and find a class. So, um, yeah, he inspires me, and um, I have many other people that inspire me. Mother Teresa inspired me, uh, and uh, Maya Angelou inspires me. Mm -hmm. uh, but in relation to my experience with Kundalini Yoga, and the more I uh, study it, the more I teach it, the more I experience it, I feel that Yogi Bhajan really was uh, a pretty awesome guy to uh, want to share these teachings with so many. Awesome. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. And uh, like we like to say, you are the inspired and the inspiration. Catherine, thank you so much for being on Inspired Living Radio today. Uh, we'll be back next Wisdom Wednesday until our next soul adventure. Be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Namaste.